my name is Sonny Kogart and welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are all doing well and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to set up your LastPass account uh, and if you're unfamiliar with LastPass then stay tuned because I will tell you all about it. LastPass is a free to use, no catch, password managing software that has been praised for their amazing encryption uh, of passwords and notes alike, alongside with a great software experience. I've been using it personally for many years and I hope to convince you with this video that this is a safety measure you should partake in. So first you're going to have to set up an account, which is easy to do, just go to their website using the link in the description below. Once that is done, you need to fill in your credentials and create your master password. Now your master password is going to be your main password that you're going to be using and it's going to be used to log into LastPass itself, which is going to grant access to all of your other passwords. So do make sure that it's a very powerful one. Um, so make sure to use capital letters, numbers and special signs and a combination of those as this will be your one and only main password. Once you have installed LastPass as the extension of your browser, you can click on it to log in and click on it again to make LastPass review all of its functions to you. So how about we give you a tour on all of the functions that LastPass has to offer. All passwords and form fill information as well as secure notes are stored within the vault. The vault is basically a full screen version of the extension, so you're probably not going to be spending too much time in there. Now below that there is sites which contains all of the passwords of your websites uh, that you've logged into. Most of the time you will be prompted to add a password once LastPass detects you've logged into a website. Uh, this will be your main way to add password information, uh, but you can also do it manually through the extension by clicking on sites and then add site. At which point you can enter all the data manually, uh, which includes the URL of the login page. Alternatively, if you've already filled in your credentials and you want to save the password manually yourself from the text field, you can go to sites and add entered data. Below that you can find your secure notes that you created which can contain notes on things such as Wi-Fi passwords, bank account details, database login information or even your driver's license or health insurance information. Alongside all of the other options that LastPass has to offer and on top of that you can also create your own secure note. When it comes to form filling all information has to be entered manually but the upside of that is that once you've done it once, you will never have to do it again. And the next time you have to fill in an entire form without any effort, for let's say an Amazon shipment, you no longer have to fill in everything anymore. The final function LastPass has to offer is its password generator, which can create passwords from 4 characters long to 100 characters long. And you also have your toggle switches to enable and disable capital letters, numerics, special signs or even weirder uh, symbols. Uh, some passwords on some sites allow you to use special symbols while other websites don't allow it and other websites allow you to have an unlimited length uh, of a password whereas other sites want you to use no more than 15 characters. I don't know either why anyone wants to limit their password capacity but in the case that that is the case LastPass has got you covered. So next up we have to discuss how to make your LastPass experience as safe as possible as staying logged in will not keep you very secure. So in order to protect you, I'm going to tell you exactly what you have to do to increase your security level. One of the best ways to do this is to log out of LastPass the second it's not being used or web browser is being closed. In order to enable this feature, click on the extension and go to preferences and just activate automatically log out when all browsers are closed. And for the minutes, Configure zero, so that LastPass will log out the second the browser is closed. But what if you walk away from your computer without closing the browser and people can have access that way? Well, obviously, you'll need to log out manually. Or, alternatively, tell LastPass to log out once you have not been using the computer for a minute or another time specified by you. Or even better, add a secondary wall by going to your vault, account settings, show advanced settings, and then enable reprompting for all the checkboxes. 
Now, for each asset you want to access inside LastPass's extension, you'll need to refill in your master password. Now, this might seem like a lot of work on the user's end, but I'm only telling you what I recommend if you're using a portable device, such as a laptop or tablet, where people can have easy access to your device if you're not paying attention. As naturally, you prefer to stay logged in for as little amount as possible to prevent people from having access. And even if all that protection still wasn't good enough for you, you can add an extra layer of protection on top of it by enabling two-factor authentication. LastPass offers many ways to use two-factor authentication, including your own app, which is personally what I use. In order to set up two-factor authentication, you need to go to your vault, account settings, click on multi-factor options, and here are all the supported multi-factor authentication apps listed. You can pick whichever one you prefer, uh, but like I said, I personally use LastPass's own authenticator. Now in order to get started, click on the little pen on the left of the authenticator option uh, and here you can enable your two-factor authentication uh, or whether or not you want to be able to log in offline where obviously you won't be able to use two-factor authentication. Now I recommend keeping offline access off, but in case you live in an area where there is an unreliable internet connection, I would recommend turning offline login on. Set the value of enable to yes and click on update uh, to fill in your master password and click on enroll to pair up your phone with the authenticator app on either Android or iOS. Now you can set up primary two-factor authentication and secondary backup, which relies on text messages instead. The secondary is pretty self-explanatory. Just add the phone number and it will send text messages with a code to you that you can use to log in. For the primary, I apologize that mine will look different as I've already paired up my phone in the past, but just click on edit or whatever it says on your screen and click on start pairing. Now do make sure that you do have the two-factor authentication app installed on your Android or iOS device by now. And open up the app and press the plus icon and scan the barcode uh, that is displayed on your screen and this will allow you to pair up your phone to your LastPass account. So now with a two-factor authentication set up, I can log in, I will get a notification on my phone, approve, and log in. LastPass also offers a security challenge inside the vault which you can use to make your protection even stronger. So how about I take you to this challenge and show you what it does. So let's go and take a look at my security challenge performance. I'm betting it's not gonna be too good. Uh, so let's log in. It gets all the scores and it basically shows me all the, ch well, it wants me to change compromised passwords or possibly compromised passwords, change weak passwords, reused passwords, and even old passwords. Now, you don't have to do this. I mean, it's recommended. Um, so you can basically play this little game and try and score 100%. Let's put it like that. Uh, so I eventually decided like, hey, let's uh, change a password. And with some sites this works, but with others it doesn't. It works with Reddit. So as you can see, I can update it through the security challenge uh, uh, feature. And when you look at the background, you can see LastPass uh, is in the background trying to change my password to a random password and saving that in the vault. So as you can see, it's going to the, uh, create a new password page. It's filling in my current password. It's filling in a random new one. It's pressing save. And there you go. Congratulations. You've changed your password. And uh, now it's changed. And you can keep doing this for all of them, um, for the ones that do work. Like I said, it doesn't work on all of them. Now, obviously, in this space of the password managing software, uh, there are going to be some competitors. Dashlane, for example, uh, is known to be a very good one, but you need to pay an annual $40 fee in order to get support on multiple devices to sync your passwords across multiple devices. This used to be the case with LastPass, but a long time ago that was replaced by a new payment model and such now is much cheaper. And it also can support multiple devices at once. So all my passwords are synced across my smartphone, tablet, PC, you name it. Uh, whereas with Dashlane, you would need to pay for that. Uh, then there is also virus scanners that have this implemented, such as Norton's uh, Safe Identity, which 
it works, but you know, your fire scanner can pull a toll on your PC sometimes. So I, I decided not to go with that. Can I just mention that LastPass is free and has all of these features that I already shown to you uh, from the start of this video. Um, this for free is absolutely amazing. And there are currently no competitors to, that do exactly this for this price point. Um, there's always a sacrifice or compromise with other companies. So this is why I recommend LastPass. And I'm going to be continuing using it for a very long time. So I want to thank you guys for watching this video and I hope you learned something and hopefully this has convinced you that this is a security measure that you should partake in. And if you like this video, please do give it a like, share it, and if you didn't like it, you know what to do, unfortunately. Um, and uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to get notified the second I do something. And of course, follow me on Instagram where I'll post all of my updates on whatsoever or alternatively follow me on Twitter. And finally, go to our Discord community in the description below to meet some more of those technological and gaming humans.